about DSA, you should have a three star, four star, or five star a course chef a profile, but that's not yeah. required. Right? That is not DSA. That is competitive programming. Student who is actually entering into the colleges, he's listening to from all of them, eventually all of them, and then gets confused. Like uh, you know, hey, beautiful people, what's up? Welcome to another brand new episode of the Developers Cafe podcast. In this episode, I have a friendly chat with Goranj about DevOps and advice for college students. So make sure to watch this episode until the very end as this episode has a lot to offer and is jam packed with knowledge. And also if you like this video, please press the like button. You can also check the links in the description. Can you first tell our listeners about yourself? Uh, okay, so I'm Garanj and I'm currently in my third year of B.Tech, pursuing majors in Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, apart from that, uh, I have uh, done my diploma in the same field, Computer Engineering. And apart from all of these, like I have interest in DevOps and Machine Learning and things like that. So yeah, that was a brief about myself. We have on your profile, it's mentioned that you are a CCAD, a Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. Can you please tell our audience how can it help anyone and what does it mean in the first place? All right. So see, CCAT is a certificate, is an examination-based certification. Okay. So it is a certificate that you get and you can use it uh, anywhere in the world. So it is actually provided by Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, uh, with collaboration with the Linux Foundation. And it is a paid certification. Well, basically, you have to purchase that uh, exam. You have to give that. And if you pass, you will have uh, the certification, which is valid for, I guess, three years or so, something like that, right? Now comes your point, like how it can help. So see, primarily this certification is for professionals, basically the ones who are already in the industry, like maybe one or two years uh, later in the industry, who actually want to get a grasp on the you know Kubernetes world and the cloud world. So that's where uh, it comes handy. But actually, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship from the Linux Foundation. Uh, so that's why you know I have uh, like given this examination because it is a costly one. It is about $375 or so. Okay. So eventually no student will buy it, right? Why would a yeah, student yeah. Uh, right. invest in that kind of thing? Right. And it helps, uh, especially in the professional field. But yeah, like it's not that that you if you do it in student life, it won't matter. It is actually giving you an edge over other candidates. So that is oh, the reason. Like, got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, you are a DevOps mentor for the GDSC of our college. So yeah. If a beginner asks you that, Bhia, I want to get started with DevOps, what roadmap will you give it to him? See, uh, before telling you the roadmap, I guess people are not confirmed that what is DevOps, right? right? So, yeah, so basically DevOps can be understand, like easiest definition I could make out is that you have an application which you want to build, test, and deploy easily, faster, and reliably, right? That is the three things that you need probably in any industry. And right. DevOps comes from the word developers and operations. So what happens in the old age industry, I would say like not that old age, but previously what happens in the industry is that we have a developers team who actually creates the whole application and then it send all of their codes and dependencies to the operations team whose responsibility was to actually deploy it in the production. Right. But that creates a lot of hassle because uh, everyone like who is in developer field have you know ha get, had that pain of uh, cloning some repository from GitHub and then having difficulties in installing right. those dependencies. <laughs> that is a real pain for developers, right? So pain, same right. thing goes for the operations team. And in fact, they have a really huge application. So you know the time for them to actually test it and then finally give it in the production is really really high. So to reduce that, Google had launched Kubernetes. That was the major you know uh, kickstarter in the DevOps world. And eventually, uh, all of these help in really faster and scalable deployments, right? So that is what the role of a developer person is. Like it uses both development and operations techniques. Okay. Now comes your point for the roadmap. So see, there's no as such roadmap because, as I said, it is a kind of professional thing. For example, you have in in the industry as a software engineer or as a cloud engineer, and after that, you have like known the fields because this is very practical thing that you can't you can learn that you can't actually read the things and just get on onto it yeah, right agreed so but still like many people like want to learn and i really encourage them to learn this because it is the future of course so uh, probably you can start with knowing the concepts of operations that what is operation you know how a simple application is made 
and how it is deployed. There's a complete cycle, right? So just get a basic knowledge of that. I'm not saying that you have to know all of the software engineering things. No, so that's not required, but just a basic knowledge of these terms. After that, uh, yeah, one more thing that is highly recommendable is get familiar with Linux based operating system, be it Linux, be it Mac OS, anything, but get yourself familiarized with it because eventually most of the clouds run on Linux. And at the end of the day, you have to run Linux. So you yeah. get, if you get familiar with it, so that would be very easy. Uh, that was the second step. Uh, third step could be get started with some, uh, you know, basic DevOps technologies like Docker or containers that we have. Uh, get familiar with Docker and try to incorporate the, uh, them in your projects. So Docker is a thing which you can basically practice a lot because whenever you create Do uh, an application or project, just think of it like yeah, at the end of the day when I complete the project, I have to create a Docker container or image out of it. That way, you know, helps uh, how you can learn Docker. And eventually, when you get familiar with all of the things, like things come, you know, as soon as you do the, these yeah. milestones, eventually new milestones come. Yeah. Try learning Kubernetes and uh, Helm and Packet Manager like things, right? Yeah. So that could be awesome. a roadmap. Awesome, for... yeah. You have been a part of various hackathons. So can you please tell our audience about how to approach a project idea as in, you know, can we break it into smaller goals or just start and then figure out along the way? Uh, okay, so like, yeah, my, uh, I agree that I have a good hackathon journey and I really learned <laughs> a lot. Like, major of my skills were because of the hackathon. Uh, now comes to a point like, how can we approach a project? So seriously, I, I'll tell you my own journey. So when I was Sorry. there in some of my first hackathons, like one, two, three hackathons, we literally had no plan. I had my uh, when my uh, you know a teammate who were there, but we don't have any particular plans. Like we just have one thing in mind that we have to go there and we have you know those times we have offline hackathons and literally we yeah. have a lot of cool swags over there. So it was a really mm -hmm. interesting journey and that was the uh, major uh, like influencing thing for us. But yeah. as soon as we get there, we have some really great talks that actually given us knowledge about how the things work, and eventually we thought of something. Initially, it will make really, you know, things that you, if you see some years later, you will say, well, what have I made is like, so it, initially we don't, I, I literally don't know about APIs. Honestly, uh, in my first hackathon, I just heard about what is API, but I never used it on how to make a web course and things like that. So the first hackathon was responsible, uh, like in that hackathon, I immediately learned how to do all those requests. Right, so. Right. Just don't, uh, you know, make those plans because it's good to have plan, but eventually you will, uh, you don't know what's the condition over there. Just think of an idea and start doing it. That could be the simplest thing. The thing is like, there's a, some general tips which I have learned so far, like by going in the hackathons. And the thing is, don't uh, rush to so many features. Generally what happens is uh, whenever uh, a team goes into hackathon, they think of, adding 20s or 50s of features in just single application. And the biggest problem with the hackathon is you have a time limit. You have a time bound which you have to follow on. If you don't get into within the time bounds, you are like out. So instead of incorporating 50s of uh, or like 20s, 50s of features into an application, just try to make a simple one which actually solves some problem, right? The major idea of any hackathon is to actually solve some problem. So instead of incorporating like you know i add machine learning i'll add blockchain i add all of all those fancy technologies just try to stick with what you have as a problem and try to solve it right that could be the simplest thing don't rush on many features apart from that explore more and more of the freebies that you get the you know that is really important in hackathons you get a lot of free stuff which you can actually use and get familiarized with so that is important Apart from that, what could I say? Um, yeah, like just explore, right? Just make things. That's how it goes. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you have an open source project, Chitti. Can you explain yeah. what is it? Okay, so that is a really new project that I made like uh, around a month ago or so. Uh, so that was, I won't take whole credit because the idea was not actually mine. It was some of my team members at GDSE made. So we are actually, you know, uh, sitting in the library and thinking of some projects like, yeah, we have to open some open source project after this is coming. So what can we do? Uh, so that was an idea of our lead this year. Like he said, like we have, we need this uh, thing to mail our uh, community members and we don't have anything free. So I thought, yeah, like 
I have worked on sending simple mails via Python previously, but I have never actually thought on this uh, perspective. So I took that idea and then you know started like, okay, what can we do? So uh, I've tried to incorporate all of the problems that we face and then eventually create a chitti. So. How did you decide that chitti could be a real problem solver? Because a lot of the times, uh, you know, students come with ideas, startup ideas, but they don't, you know, they don't have the backing behind it. They can't be sure that, okay, it will work, it will not work. So what was your light bulb moment, if I can say that, you know, you thought, okay, yeah, it can work. Okay, so the first thing was like, I have, was having this idea because we were, we were have, facing this problem, right? The very yeah. first thing was, we were actually facing the problem and then we tried to solve it. Yeah. The second thing was, uh, see, uh, I have been part of like a little bit, some of the organizing teams privacy, uh, priorly, right, prior to this. And generally, in every, any event, you have to send bulk emails to uh, like participants, right? That is yeah. a necessary thing. And uh, we have a lot of bulk mail uh, solutions which are available, but they're really paid. So anyone who's like any community who's doing the work, they don't have that many, uh, you know, that much money to yeah. do the things. Yeah. They all depend on sponsors. So yeah. that's why I think like, yeah, let's just create it and get some feedback, maybe see. Whenever we create, you said, no, we have a lot of startup ideas, but 90% of the ideas fail. fail. But yeah. at least we have to start to actually know whether it will run, work or not. So I started it and like, I cannot 100% say that, yeah, this, will, this is going to work. Like, no one can say that. But I thought that it might work. And yeah, eventually like, people get to have a good responsibility. So, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But yeah, how did you start working on the idea? Did you already know that, okay, I have to use this technology, this technology, and were you already a pro in it? Or did you just learn on the go? You just had an idea and you started implementing and you learned on the go. Okay, so like, see, this is a question, you know, which anyone asks, like to me or to anyone who's like in the industry that, how do you uh, make a product? Do you know all of the technology stack? See, no one knows all of the technology, right? No one never knows. Even the creators of technology don't actually Agreed. know the complete stuff, right? Agreed. So there's nothing like that. It is you can just say a way to uh, procrastinate the things. Like, okay, we will first learn the things and then create. The, so yeah. things are not going to happen like that. Just have a basic idea and take a pen and a paper. I will highly recommend that. Take a pen and a paper. Okay. First, have your idea like what you want to create. And then try to have a very high level components. Like, okay, if I'm gonna make Chitty, for example, there'll be two parts, like one backend, one front end, right? And then probably in backend, what do I all need to do? Like maybe sending emails, taking passwords. So right, those broad, you know, very okay. broad and high level things. Yeah. And then just Google them. Eventually, like oh, uh, the only requirement I would say to do any of these projects is get familiar with at least one language, be it Node.js, be it Python, like be it anything. Okay. But one language is eventually needed. Like Obviously, you need something to write, right? Yeah. And then, you know, try to just Google them because Googling is a really an art which you need to learn. While you're a developer, you should know how to Google the things. Yeah. So just write all those things. How can we send a mail in Python? Get the idea. And eventually, you can just create and write script. So, for example, on Stack Overflow, you have a lot of uh, codes that will actually help you in sending mails. Now, all you need to do is just use the same thing in the in your respective, like maybe you want to have some more recipients and things like that. Yeah. So don't stick to learn more technology stacks. I won't recommend that. If you know a, Pyth a single language, I'm familiar with Python, so I'll just say about Python. But if you're familiar with any single language, just go with it and start implementing it. It is, uh, you know, it is a very self uh, said uh, code. I don't remember that, but that you cannot get 100% in your first attempt. You will never get it, right? right? But at least you need your first attempt to get that, like maybe 10% or 20%, and then eventually you will increase your product. So that's how you go, right? Yeah, I get asked this question a lot that do college subjects matter? So as you are my senior, can you please throw some light on it? Uh, see, that is a very personal perspective. People have their different Agreed. perspectives. So, Agreed. Uh, and that depends on your journey as well. So maybe Agreed. what happens after graduation is, like if you're preparing for something government examinations or any competitive examinations like gate like college subjects is the only thing that matters yeah believe that that's yeah. all you need like just get a 100% grasp of it and you're good to go but if you are into corporates then i won't say like the whole of those subjects matter but obviously the subjects like uh, you know 
the algorithm design software engineering operating system database management and basic you know yeah. i would say core computer science subjects computer networking yeah. things like these matter a lot believe me highest companies uh, you know i have my friends who actually told me that the companies like google and microsoft even like high companies even ask some of these questions sometimes in their interviews because some basic ones like at least but you should have knowledge of these subjects so not all but some of them are really important. okay okay yeah and bhaiya as you have a diploma and now you are doing graduation so can you please have you know give some advice for folks who are just entering into college and want to make the best out of this four years of their life uh okay so the biggest advice i could give is just enjoy the thing okay don't uh, you know what i have seen in the prior year like since this covid lockdown has started uh, the social media has bumped up a lot yeah and we have a tons of influencer and all of them have their own ideology i'm not saying no one is right no one is wrong but all of them have their own ideology and perspective right mm-hmm. how they succeeded in their life and they're telling that yeah now what happening with a gender student who is actually entering into the colleges he's listening to from all of them eventually all of them and then gets confused like uh, you know i literally got a lot of questions that bhaiya i am in this year i am pursuing this this thing and should i do first dsa should i go with development so the thing is see that's not how the things work the simplest way is just start with programming right c c++ i won't recommend going anywhere else than this start with c or c++ because these are the core languages you know which gives a lot of concepts of programming like pointers and memory things so it is really important to go with stick with these languages and then move to any other apart from that follow anyone like there are a lot of people who are saying a lot of things on yeah. the youtube but yeah. whoever suits you the best just choose one yeah. don't go with many of them right you cannot uh, have on the two boards right you can you have to stand yeah. on a one agreed so that's the thing yeah mm-hmm. and the biggest mistake that i made in my early career so like in diploma i didn't uh, go in the dsa so what happened at that time and even right now is we have a lot of hypes right we have hypes of machine learning we have hypes of now blockchain yeah. then this devops in cloud right yeah. these are really good subjects but you should know the basics of dsa now there are also people right. you know get confused with uh, like generally what people mean is like to know about dsa you should have a 3 star or 4 star or 5 star a course chef a profile but that's not yeah. required right? that is not dsa that is competitive programming so start with dsa like the basic nonlinear data structures and basic algorithms and linear data structures like right? start with them and do some basic practice of it like some questions are there on every platform but that really doesn't mean that you have to do it all the day and night and like just get the five star ranking on course chef that really doesn't mean it right if you yeah. like it do it but it's not necessary at all okay. just do the basic dsa and after that just explore the things right you have four years come on you have four years like four years is a really huge time you don't yeah. have to do everything in the first year itself that's fine okay yeah. explore fields maybe you you might be wanting to develop in flutter maybe it's web development maybe you are interested in machine learning just give you know a month or so for each, to each of them like whatever you feel like i should give and eventually whatever feels you the most comfortable just go with it you have three more years so for example in first year explore the things three years to like just master over it that's that could be the simplest strategy yeah wow yeah really insightful listening to you i mean i have learned a lot so i'm sure that the listeners will gain the lot out of it so uh okay so first of all have, thanks a lot for having me here because uh, i really have learned yeah. a lot from the communities so this was my time to give it back to the community sure yeah and i encourage everyone to not only take from the community but just you know try to think how can we contribute to the community it's not necessary that you should know code and all those things and practice open source if you can apart from that just enjoy life yeah. like it's a life you have to enjoy it's not that you have to just yeah. code and do the things right just enjoy yeah. life that's that's all